Hi everyone from Bison Media Blog Studios. I am not Dom Izzo, but let's get it going. Eric Peterson joins us for another edition of the Bison Football Camp Chronicles, I guess you could say. Eric is a fourth member of our, our broadcast slash writing slash blog team. Uh, you were out there last week, Eric, and you saw some pretty deep uh, cornerbacks. Yeah, you know, you thought it was going to be a strength coming in with Marcus Williams coming back. You got, you know, Colton Hegel at safety, another part of that secondary. But now you have Brendan Pierre coming back. C.J. Martin, the transfer from Northern Iowa, has looked good. And a C.J. Smith, the redshirt freshman, is another guy. One of the practices I was out there, he had an interception and took it back for a touchdown. So a position that everyone thought was going to be a strength to begin with, maybe even stronger than they first thought. I remember the days of the D1 uh, transition with uh, Bobby Babich and Scott Walter and absolutely nothing after that. They had two guys who uh, did it the best they could uh, playing every play, but uh, they recruited this position so well. And you talk about Andre Martin from Northern Iowa, who wasn't a recruit, but joined them uh, thanks to a graduate school program. There's seven guys. You have Ariel Boyd, uh, Zach Colvin, we haven't even mentioned. Seven guys at corner you can play. I think you're going to see some uh, benefits there through uh, special teams. You got some speed, you got some athleticism. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a very deep, uh, to go along with the deep uh, defensive line, who, um, although there's some questions on Justin Juckum with his injury situation, although I think he'll play, Ryan Drevelo, but linebacker, that's the one position on defense I think we need to look at. Uh, I mean, you got Grant Olson in the middle. He has some injury concerns at the beginning of fall camp. I don't think it was full contact since since then he's been moved to full, full contact. You got Carlton Littlejohn and Travis Beck on the outside. We know the type of season Travis Beck had last year coming out of nowhere. You've, you've got Dinwiddie as at that you kind of first guy off the bench. Uh, other than that, though, that, that's where the question is. Where's the depth going to come in this unit? Well, they're minus one guy, and one guy they expected. That's Brandon Jemison, the linebacker from Fargo South, who's in his senior year, suspended for team rules last week. You were reporting on that situation last week. What, what happened? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much all we know. They, I think last Thursday or late in the week last week, uh, the, a release came out from the university. He had been dismissed from the team, and they wouldn't really go into it any further. We tried to, uh, you know, dig a little deeper. We found out he's under investigation from the Fargo Police Department. But at this point, we, we know nothing new. But I, I guess, you know, the question was how, you know, how much time was Brandon Jemison going to get? I mean, you've chronicled it well. He's coming off of two hip surgeries. You know, he, he had a great true freshman year, good as a sophomore, but then had that first hip surgery. And since then, it, it's been a struggle for him to stay on the field. He made that great play against Georgia Southern on the fourth down play at the goal line, a stuffed a running play by the Eagles. That may be his legacy because um, his uh, hips, I, I saw uh, Brandon Jemison in practice uh, this fall that I didn't see before, and that was he was hobbling. He just didn't have the explosiveness. I don't think he would have played. I, I think when push came to shove, I, you know, for that injury, as serious as it is, I, I just don't know if he would have played. So uh, moving on, the season opener is not too far away, and uh, the third game of the year, Prairie View A&M may bring uh, some interesting players to the Fargo Dome, one of which is a transfer running back from Auburn. Well, you might have heard of the guy. His name is Michael Dyer, and if you watched the national championship a few years ago when they when they beat uh, Oregon for the championship, he was kind of in that infamous play where it looked like he was tackled, landed on an Oregon defender, popped up, and you know brought it you know close to the goal line. And a few plays later, you know Auburn's kicking a field goal and winning the national championship. But since then, he he got dismissed from the Auburn team. I think he was at Arkansas, Arkansas State, State for a little yeah. bit, got dismissed there. And now he's on the Prairie View and A and M, which coincidentally was also a team that was also taking a look at Tyron Matthew, who recently got dismissed uh, from the LSU team. So although now it looks like Matthew may return to LSU, not play football this year and try to get back with the Tigers in you know, 2013, but you know, if the things would have worked out, you get him looking at two prominent SEC players coming into the Fargo door more early in the season. That would have been very interesting. Dyer, six foot one, 215 pounds. It'll be interesting kind of the game plan that NDSU puts on him. But you still have to block for the guy. So whether Prairie View A&M gets some uh, blockers, that remains to be seen. That'll do it for another edition of the Bison Media Blog. Stay with us as Dom Izzo and myself chronicle the Camp Chronicles.